In our next common misconception, we want to talk about the misconceptions about the authority to objects when we use an authorization list to secure those objects. The authorization list is a list of authorizations that define the public and private authorities that can be used as a template for assigning similar authorities to multiple objects. A uh, typical use of an authorization list, uh, for example a payroll data library, would be to secure all the files in that library to one group for use rights, maybe a query group or a data analysis group, and to another group, the payroll group, uh, that actually updates the data, give them change rights using the authorization list, and that all the other users on the system would fall into the public bucket and they would get exclude rights to the authorization list and therefore to the object secured by the list. So the author authorization list is a template for assigning authorities to usually multiple objects. Now the misconceptions are, really there's three major misconceptions. One is that when an authorization list is assigned to an object, that all of the authorizations to the object are going to be stored in the authorization list, meaning that if I have an authorization list assigned to the payroll master file, that all of the authorities to the payroll master file can be seen by looking at the authorization list. The other misconception is that public authority to the object secured by the authorization list are going to be seen in the authorization list. So if the authorization list says public exclude, then that is the authority that is assigned to the objects secured by the list. The other misconception is that it doesn't really make any difference who owns an authorization list. Now let's look at an example. On the top here of this slide we see an authorization list called prodlib O. At the bottom we see an object customer file CSCSTP that is secured by this authorization list and let's take a look at these exact authorities. The owner of this authorization list is a user called PayUser. Therefore PayUser gets all authority to the list. We see that public is set to exclude. A group of IT has use rights. Operations group or group ops has use rights. And QProgrammer has a private authority of change rights. In the bottom we see the actual object secured by the list. This object, the actual customer file here, is owned by Bob the Tech. And it is secured by the authorization list prodlib O. And the public authority here to the object itself is change, even though the authorization list says exclude. All rights to the object for Bob the Tech, who is the owner. Group IT has all rights to the file, even though the authorization list says group IT has use rights. Group ops here has change rights to the object, even though the authorization list says use rights to the object. And QProgrammer here in the object has all rights, whereas in the authorization list we see QProgrammer has change rights instead of all rights. So what are the actual effective authorities that are in place for this file once we secure it with the authorization list. And if you look at these green splotches, that is where we see PayUser, who is the owner of the list, gets all authority to the object through the authorization list, even though PayUser is not e even listed on the object. But because PayUser is the owner of the list, they get all authority to the objects secured by the list which makes a big difference as to the ownership of this authorization list. When we look in the object itself to see the effect of authorities, the public authority in the object is specified as change. Bob the Tech has all, Group IT all, Group Ops has change, and Programmer has all. Even though the authorization list secures the object, the effective authorities for the object are shown here in green. Pay user has all, public has change rights. Bob the Tech, all, Group IT, all, Group Ops has change, and QProgram has, has all. That's the way that the system evaluates the authority of these authorization lists. Now, in order to fix this problem, what we need to do is we need to take another step. And the steps we'll take is to change the owner of the object itself. We can see here at the bottom 
uh, we changed the owner to pay user. It was Bob the Tech. Now pay user has all rights to the file, as it should have. We see that we say that the public authority to the object is not changed any longer. Now we see the public authority to the object is set to the setting called Audl. And that says, I'm not going to tell you what the authority to the public is here inside the object. You have to go and look at the authorization list in order to determine the public authority. And if we look at the authority in the authorization list, it says public exclude. What we'll want to do with the objects is remove all of the private authorities and we'll leave only the owner's authority and the public's authority to the object itself. And the public authority will say audl, which will say point to the authorization list. The owner of the object will have all rights. And in this case, the owner of the authorization list is the owner of the object, which works out well because the ownership of the object or the authorization list does not provide any additional authority to any user. And so the effective authorities on the object now are public is exclude, group IT is use, group ops is use, Q programmer is change, and then we see pay user in the object itself has all, and the public authority to the uh, object specifies authorization list that says defer to the authorization list for the actual object authority. Now, the reality of an authorization list is for the authorization list to set the public authority for the object secured by the list, the object public authority has to be set to the value asterisk audl. If it says all change or use, then the, the object does not have that public authority. Again, in order for the authorization list to specify the public authority for the object, the object itself has to specify public as audl. Object and authorization ownership is critical and you don't want it to convey improper authority to the owner. So for example, Bob the Tech had all authority to the file, even though we don't want Bob the Tech to be given authority to the file simply because he owns the file. Instead, we want to assign some kind of an owning profile. In this case, we used pay user. You could use prod owner or some other ownership user profile that is not going to provide any kind of additional authority to a person or to a user. We want to remove all the private authorities from the objects so that they don't override the settings in the authorization list because that's exactly what they'll do. When we have conflicting authorities, they're going to be resolved based upon the way that the system checks the authority, which is the first thing that it checks is, is the user specified in the object? If it is, that's the authority for the user. Or the next thing it checks is the user specified in the authorization list. If the user is in the authorization list, that will be their authority. After your user, it checks for your groups. Is your group specified in the object? If it is, that's your authority to the object. If your group is not specified in the object, but it's specified in the authorization list, then your authority is specified and effective based upon the authorization list. And when you have multiple groups that are specified in the authorization list and you're looking say for example for change access for the file. If any of your groups provide change access that will provide you change access to the object.